Today's topic is 3.2 Solving Limits, Part 3. We're on pages 126 to 139 in your text. Our curriculum outcome is the same. It's 30.3 to demonstrate understanding of limits and continuity. And we only have one lesson objective, and that's to learn how to approach the limits of absolute value expressions and piecewise expressions. So when we're talking about limits of absolute value expressions, it's easiest to evaluate limits involving absolute value if you first remove the absolute value sign from the expression. Then you need to know whether to replace what you had with absolute value with the positive, about, uh, positive of that thing or the negative of that thing. So let's take a look here. We're taking a look at, of the limit as x approaches 4 from the negative side of this expression. So what we're going to do is we're going to factor the top. Because right now if we plug in a 4 in the bottom, it's not going to work because we get a uh, 0 and we can't have a 0 in the bottom. So when we factor an ex absolute value expression, both those two expressions are going to be in absolute value. So the two things that multiply to negative 4 and add to negative 3 is negative 4 and positive 1. So now when I have the absolute value of x minus 4, I need to know if I'm going to replace that with a positive x minus 4 or the negative x minus 4. Well, because we're approaching this from the negative side of 4, that means we're going to replace this with a negative x minus 4. So this actually becomes negative x minus 4 over x minus 4, and we still have the x plus 1. So now when we simplify this thing and we cancel out x minus 4 and x minus 4, we're left with, and I should have written this with absolute value still because we haven't removed the absolute value sign from this, we get the limit as x approaches 4 from the negative side of negative absolute value x plus 1. So now I can make that substitution of 4, and so that's just negative of 4 plus 1. So that's a negative 5. If I'm looking at that same limit, but when uh, x approaches 4 from the positive side, I'm going to do the same thing. So I get to this point where I have x minus 4 and x plus 1 all over x minus 4. But now, as I re replace my uh, absolute value of x minus 4, when I take the absolute value of that thing, I'm going to replace it with the positive version because we're looking at it coming from the right-hand side or from the positive side. So now when I cancel these two things out, I am going to be left with a positive one. So when I make my substitution, I'm just going to plug in a regular 4, so I get the absolute value of 4 plus 1, and that is a 5. So what that means is since I'm approaching x from the negative side of 4 and x from the positive side of 4, and I get two different numbers, in one case I got negative 5, in the other case I got positive 5, that means that the limit as x approaches 4 of this thing does not exist because you need the same number. So when you're dealing with absolute value, you're going to want to take a look at it from the negative side and the positive side. Even if the question doesn't say that, you're still going to want to look at it from the negative and positive side to make sure that you get the same answer either way. So our final type of limit is when we're taking the limits of piecewise functions. So when you're determining the limit of a piecewise function that occurs where there's a split, you need to approach the limit from both the positive and negative side and see if you attain the same answer. If you don't get the same answer, then the limit does not exist. So what I mean is um, where there's a split, here's where the limit is uh, x approaches negative 5. Now this piecewise function looks like 2x squared minus 49 when x is in between negative infinity and negative 5, but it looks like 2 to the power of x plus 4 when x is um, everything greater than negative 5, so negative 5 to infinity. So our split is at this value of negative 5, and we're trying to find the limit at negative 5. So it's a simple substitution question. We want to just substitute negative 5 into both parts of these equations. If we get the same answer, then we know that that's where the limit is. If we get different answers, that means that there's no limit at all because it has to approach the same height. So I'm going to take negative 5, plug it into the first part. And I get 2 times uh, 25 minus 49, so that's 50 minus 49, so that's 1. And that's as, as if I was approaching it from the negative side. So that would be like finding the limit as x approaches 5 from the negative side. If I'm going to approach it from the positive side of negative 5. That means I'm going to be looking at this function. And that means it's negative 5 plus 4. Or 2 to the power of negative 5 plus 4. And that's the limit as x is approaching negative 5 from the positive side be negative there too. And so when I do that, I get 2 to the power of negative 1, which is a half. Now, because I get two different heights or two different um, values when I plug in these numbers, that means that the limit when it approaches from the negative side is 1. 
the limit when it approaches from the positive side is a half. That means that the limit does not exist. So in summary, when approaching absolute value expressions and piecewise functions, then you need to be sure to approach the limit from both sides. So both, both the positive and the negative side of the x value that we're talking about. And remember that in order for the limit to exist, you have to have, approach the same value from both that positive and the negative side. You can't have different values or different limits from the left-hand side compared to the right-hand side. Um, in that case, your limit does not exist. So your assignment is on pages 138 to 139. We're finally finishing that assignment. And that's numbers 52 to 63. Good luck, and we'll see you in class.